new infrastructure, skyscrapers, and gigantic renewable energy projects. Australia's investments into ambitious megaprojects are booming. For example, they plan to build a massive solar farm that transfers electricity 4,000 kilometers under the sea to Singapore. But while many developments are moving ahead on track, some projects have been dogged by delays, billion dollar blowouts, and construction complications. So what exactly is going wrong here? And will Australia's massive mega projects be successful? In today's video, we take a look at the 10 largest construction projects in Australia and uncover their current situation. Number 10, South Bank. Billed as Australia's most iconic project, South Bank is set to become the tallest skyscraper in the Southern Hemisphere. Named after the Melbourne suburb, it's located directly next to the Central Business District to the north and the Arts Precinct to the east. On completion, South Bank will consist of two towers, one measuring 366 meters and the other 288 meters. The most eye-catching design feature is the so-called green spine. The two buildings twist in tandem, cutting into a glass facade with open green terraces for apartments located at the lower levels. The spine emerges from a podium at the bottom of both towers, which is open to the public. It continues up to the roof, where the gardens of the future create a rooftop park in the top of each tower. This is not the place to be if you're afraid of heights. South Bank is aiming to become Australia's first five-minute vertical city, a mini metropolis in the sky with pretty much everything residents need on site. In 2020, the Victorian government fast-tracked the towers for approval as a way of boosting the state construction industry. With a cost of $1.3 billion, it'll generate almost 5,000 jobs. And in five years, the two new additions to Melbourne skyline should be ready for opening. We're definitely excited to see how the green terraces and parks will look. Number 9. Square Kilometer Array Next up, we have another mega project reaching for the sky, but in a slightly different way. The Square Kilometer Array Observatory is a joint international radio telescope shared between Australia and South Africa. Together, they'll form the, quote, world's most powerful radio astronomy facility. The Australian component will include more than 130,000 antennas designed to receive low-frequency radio waves. These are arranged in clusters of around 250, spread out at over 500 carefully chosen locations. They're situated within the radio quiet zone in Western Australia to ensure minimal interference from any man-made structures to help detect extremely faint radio signals. However, the isolation of the site has a big disadvantage. It makes construction way more complicated. Basic infrastructure like roads and electricity have to be set up specifically for the project. And that's part of the reason why it'll take another five or six years before the Australian section of the observatory is even completed. The end goal of the project is more than just exploration. Scientists hope to be able to study things like dark matter, dark energy, and how galaxies form. Therefore, the project has been in the works for more than 30 years and will likely cost more than 2 billion US dollars by the time it's finished. Number eight, Central Place Sydney Tech Hub. Another project that's attracting capital investment is Sydney's brand new tech hub. Directly next to Sydney's busiest transport hub, the complex is trying to replicate the success of places like Silicon Valley. Central Place, the biggest piece of the area's development, already has $2 billion of funding behind it. It will consist of two commercial buildings. The original proposal was composed of two rectangular blocks. However, a revised version of three curved blocks updated the design to blend more seamlessly with surrounding heritage buildings. Inside, the goal is to attract people to work in the 130,000 square meters of offices and workplaces. In particular, tech companies in the cybersecurity, AI, and quantum computing industries are being targeted. Small paths connecting each building will be filled with restaurants and cafes, as well as a dining hub designed to foster connections and innovation between workers from different sectors. It's part of a plan to attract people back to the workplace, but it might take a little more than cafes to convince people to commute again. Opposite Central Place, one will find the new headquarters of the Australian tech giant Atlassian, which will be the world's tallest hybrid timber tower. All in all, the tech hub has already attracted $6.7 billion of investment. 
With a mix of private investment and little political opposition, development is moving ahead with pace, unlike public projects elsewhere in the country. Number 7. Women's and Children's Hospital Over in Adelaide, the Women's and Children's Hospital has occupied the same location since 1876, but changing demands are now forcing the institution to abandon its heritage and construct a more modern facility. The complex will be made up of a new hospital building, an eight-story parking garage, and a renewable energy plant to power the all-electric hospital. The location is strategically positioned next to Biomed City, full of universities, research centers, and, crucially, close by to the Royal Adelaide Hospital. The location has been a tug of war between political parties since it was announced in 2013. Nine years later in 2022, the government decided to demolish a police barracks to make space for the new facility. Political opponents had argued that the historic police barracks and surrounding parkland should be preserved. So there are big concerns here, there are big question marks, and of course there is a very big cost blowout as well. These kinds of disputes are just one example of many as to why government megaprojects rarely finish on time or under budget. All these changes and delays are driving up that price tag. The first cost was determined to be $1.2 billion, but after independent and government reviews, the latest figure has ramped up to $2.1 billion, with the completion date pushed back to 2030. Number 6. Western Sydney International Airport Government disputes have also been delaying the construction of a much-needed airport in Sydney for decades. Since 1920, the primary airport used to travel to and from the city has been the Kingsford Smith Airport, which is just not fit for expansion. As there's no space for additional runways and piers on the mainland, an offshore expansion was considered. However, this was ruled out as it could lead to congestion in the airspace, an increase in environmental damage, and noise pollution. Plus, the airport has a seven-hour flight ban each night to protect local residents from noise. This might also explain why flights to Australia are so darn expensive. One report found that a new airport needs to be built before 2030 to keep up with passenger volume. If not, there would be an estimated $60 billion loss to the national economy over the next four decades alone. That's why a site in Sydney's west called Badgeries Creek 44 kilometers to the west of Sydney city center, is now under construction. The land was acquired between 1986 and 1991 for this purpose, but in 1989, the government controversially chose to build a third runway at Kingsford Smith instead of developing Badgeries Creek. That was the beginning of a series of delays, and it wasn't until 2014 that the project actually moved forward, when an analysis confirmed that the location was the most suitable option because it allows for continual expansion. In 2018, the Western Sydney International Airport finally began groundwork, and $3.5 billion was allocated for the entire build. The first stage involves building a 3,700-meter runway, a terminal, and facilities to support a maximum of 10 million passengers annually. It'll also be connected by a new rail line to an ambitious new Sydney metro system, but more on that later. Number 5. Star of the South, Victoria For now, let's move down to Victoria, where the state government has approved a massive new renewable project that would be the first of its kind in Australia. Off the shore of Melbourne, the Star of the South project will install hundreds of wind turbines, covering an area of around 500 square kilometers, almost three quarters the size of Singapore. Onshore substations will then distribute the electricity into the national grid and supply up to 20% of Melbourne's households. Star of the South is estimated to bring between $5.3 and $6.6 billion into the state and create thousands of jobs. However, the mega project has been consistently delayed by a government slow to react, putting the future of Australia's renewable industry at risk. The South Australian Labor government has decided to oppose this offshore wind zone. Early on, project managers complained that there was no comprehensive legal framework for offshore renewable energy. Most of the regulation was specifically made for oil or gas exploration rather than offshore wind farms. This held back development until 2021, when the Offshore Electricity Infrastructure Bill was passed. The following year, even more momentum picked up when a section of the Bass Strait was declared a development zone, and the Star of the South was awarded major project status. Still though, the timeline to finish by 2028 looks unlikely, as the project is yet to sign a contractor for construction. 
While the Star of the South's own website estimates that offshore wind projects usually take three to five years, others estimate that the project could be way past 2030 before it's operational. Number four, Snowy 2.0. Australia has been at the cutting edge of renewable energy for more than half a century. In 1974, the Snowy Mountains hydroelectric scheme was completed, a mega project that at the time was rated as one of the civil engineering wonders of the modern world. Containing 16 dams, 145 kilometers of tunnels, and eight power stations, it supplies 4,500 gigawatt hours of electricity to Sydney, Canberra, and Melbourne, powering on average almost 4 million households each year. Now, Snowy 2.0 aims to take the next step in transitioning away from carbon dependence. It will link two dams using a 27-kilometer power hydro pump waterway. This acts as a giant storage of energy to improve the overall efficiency of the system. However, construction has been anything but smooth. The project's management acquired three tunnel boring machines and believed that they could deal with the highly variable conditions, including soft and sandy ground. In 2021, after just 146 meters of progress, the team was proven wrong when one of the machines collided with soft ground and accidentally opened up a 10 meter wide sinkhole. It then took several months to stabilize the area. Workers were even forced to evacuate when there was a hazardous chemical breach discovered. Snowy 2.0 is now at least four years behind, and the cost has ballooned from 1.3 billion to almost 8 billion. As well as the tunnel boring roadblocks, the global pandemic interrupted supply chains and on-site work, leaving it only 40% completed to date. Originally expected in 2021, the new estimated completion date is December 2028. Number 3. Australia Asia Power Link Renewable infrastructure is also attracting private investment, looking to capitalize on the transition. The Australia Asia Power Link has the potential to be the country's most revolutionary renewable mega project. The idea is to build a gigantic solar farm in the Northern Territory of Australia, covering 15,000 hectares of land. It's supposed to transmit 6.4 gigawatts through an 800 kilometer transmission line to Darwin in the country's north. Then it would pass through a high voltage undersea cable 4,200 kilometers through Indonesia, taking 2.2 gigawatts to Singapore. That's enough to comfortably power every household in Singapore. The total investment needed currently stands at around $27 billion. Indonesia has already approved a subsea survey permit, and Singapore has confirmed it's in the market for importing power. That all sounds good. However, there are problems with the management of the project. The company behind the proposal, Sun Cable, was controlled jointly by two Australian billionaires. But following a disagreement between the partners, negotiations unfortunately came to a standstill. Sun Cable has since been taken over by one of the partners' investment groups, Grok Ventures, which has only committed $43 million in funding so far. If you recall, the project's going to cost more than 500 times that. So as of today, the updated plan is to supply 900 megawatts of electricity to Darwin by 2030, and then upgrade to Singapore in the following years. Number two, Sydney Metro. Next up, Sydney is getting a major upgrade to its rail system, with four new lines spread out to connect the northwest, southwest, and greater west parts of the city. It will soon take passengers underneath the Sydney Harbour, through the stations in the central city, and include the new rail line running directly to the Western Sydney Airport. The first line opened in 2019 and includes 13 stations. It's the first entirely driverless metro in the country, with specially designed doors and mechanical gap filling to ensure automated safety. However, while the first line was finished $666 million under budget, and a second is in the final stages of testing, other sections have proven to be far more complicated. For example, the Sydney Metro West Line has overblown its budget by $8 billion. Already, a second independent review has been launched by the government to determine why the costs went so far over budget and hasn't ruled out canceling the entire line. This line has become a political pawn used in election campaigns. The Premier is under pressure to build more stations, but at a cost of up to $703 million per kilometer, it's looking increasingly unlikely. Number 1. Suburban Rail Loop 
Not wanting to fall behind in the intercity rivalry, Melbourne is risking it all to undertake a massive transport system of its own. The suburban rail loop is truly a mega project, and it's one of the most ambitious in Australian history. It would link the east, west, and north of Melbourne through a 90-kilometer orbital rail system. Just like the Sydney Metro, automated high-speed trains will run through a network almost completely underground. SRL East, which is the first of three stages in construction, is already underway. However, the mega project has been clouded by controversy since its inception. Its plan was revealed just months before the 2018 state election. At that time, according to the government, the entire suburban rail could be completed for $33 billion. Even back then, it was immediately criticized for multiple reasons. For not consulting the key independent infrastructure bodies during the planning stage, for announcing its plans too early, and for taking on too massive a task. Then, in 2022, a parliamentary budget office analysis found that the cost was more than quadruple these first estimates, $133 billion. This has eventually prompted the political opposition to promise to cancel the project if it wins the next election, pledging to redirect funding towards healthcare instead. Overall, it remains to be seen whether this project can be completed as planned. What's your opinion on that? Should these massive mega projects be completed despite enormous cost increases? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to know more about the biggest mega projects in Europe, you should check out this video. Thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you next time.